Hey everyone, it's me Johnny Cage here, back with part 20 of the Dark Souls 3 full playthrough walkthrough. In this part of the walkthrough, we're going to go through the second DLC, The Ringed City. We're going to do the first kind of big section of that, which is called the Dreg Heap. So in order to follow along with this, or in order to access this area, you will need the Ringed City DLC, or the Season Pass for the game, or I guess the Fire Fades Edition. It should all be on there. Alright, my character stats are as follows. Currently level 102, with 35 Vigor, 10 Attunement, 28 Endurance, 23 Vitality, 40 Strength, 10 Intelligence, 26 Faith. I'm currently using a Butcher Knife plus 10, the Grass Crash Shield, I have a Cleric Sacred Chime, and then I also have the Iron Helm and the Iron Set, along with the Armor of the Sun. Currently using the Night Slayer's Ring, Covetous Silver Serpent Ring, Karthus Milk Ring, and the Estus Ring. And then I will bring those back onto the bar as well. All right, so in order to access the Ring City DLC, you can do it in one of two ways. You can either complete the Ashes of Ariandel DLC, and then after defeating Sister Frida and Father Ariandel, a teleporting bonfire will appear at the back end of their boss arena. Or you can teleport directly to the Dreg Heap and skip the Ashes of Ariandel DLC by going to the Kiln of the First Flame. So if you have beaten the base game and you have that area accessible, go for it. Uh, both teleporting bonfires go to the same place, it doesn't really matter, um, but I guess for story purposes, uh, we can start at the Sister Frida bonfire. But again, either way, it doesn't really matter. So the Dreg Heap will end with a dual boss fight against the Demon Princes. Uh, these are sort of like dragon-ish bosses, um, and depending on which one you kill uh, first, things change a little bit. Um, I generally don't pay attention to that, because all the attacks are kind of the same, so I never really worry about it, but we'll talk about it when we get to it. Okay, so we can use this bonfire to travel to the Dreg Heap. This is just a teleport, so we will light a bonfire in a moment. All right, so I will tell you this, the Ring City, I feel, has a lot more relevant story to Dark Souls in general than the Ashes of Ariandel uh, DLC did. And so the Ring City is really like an homage or a send off to the Dark Souls series. Okay, so outside here in the Dreg Keep, uh, we see a pilgrim who we can speak with and we'll do that now. Oh, your head's square on your shoulders, is it? I thought that clamoring tin can was the last. But here we go again. What is it you want from this old stone-armed hag? I've nothing for you, not a smithereen. I just like to stand here and take in the view. Well, that came out of nowhere. You think an old stone-armed hag would be brimming with goodies? I've <laughs> none of that, not a smithereen. So she's sort of lying because she does have things to sell. Um, that said, the Shrine Handmaiden sells most of this. Uh, the Split Leaf Greatsword um, is, I believe, unique to her. So if you want, go ahead and grab that. But we can speak with her one more time. At the close of the Age of Fire, all lands meet at the end of the Earth. Great kingdoms and anemic townships will be one and the same. A great tide of human enterprise, all for naught. That's why I'm so taken by this grand sight. This must be what it's like to be a god. Oh, if you just can't stop yourself, at least hear this. Far below, there's a deep, dark hole carved out of a tree. From time to time, voices brim from the depths of the cavity even now. Matterings of the very demon that Prince Lorien spoke of, I'm sure. 
horrible sounds of an afflicted thing, yet cursing men. At the clothing. All right. Keep your marvel ready. Okay, so basically, this woman. I can't even remember her name. The Stone Hump Tag. Um, she sort of sets up the story for the Ring City. And the story is that uh, basically all kingdoms and all sort of all time go to the end of the earth and sort of converge in one place. That's why this whole place is sideways and just folding in on itself. Um, and so Prince Lorien, who is Lothric's brother, came here and uh, slayed the demon. Or at least put down a demon. And so Lorien was here at one time. And then went back to Lothric, I guess. Or the area of Lothric. Uh, but that demon is still down there. And so that is our boss of this section of the walkthrough. Okay, so here we see a silhouette or a phantom of Slave Knight Gale pointing down. And basically what he's doing is he's pointing uh, for us to go down. And so scattered throughout the drag heap there are these ash piles. And a lot of these ash piles have the uh, fall control uh, sorcery sort of enchanted into them. So you don't actually take fall damage as long as you land within the ash piles. That's kind of how that works. All right, so after dropping down a bit, we can come over here. And then there's an enemy over here. And this guy sort of summons other enemies. So you got to watch out for him. I recommend killing him as quickly as you can. But you'll see sort of all these guys who are... They don't really have any health. They all die in two hits, but they can gang up on you and do a lot of damage. So you do have to be careful for that. And then there's another summoner over here that we got to deal with. So killing him does not necessarily kill the things that he has summoned, but it will make it so he can't summon anymore. So we can come up here. I'm actually just realizing we never killed the dragon in High Wall. Alright, and so we have this big guy. We can sort of ignore him for now. Come up here, get the Aqua Marine Dagger. And then I really love their heads. It's just sort of like a it's a void. It's really sick. But you can do a falling animation on them. And more or less one shot them will require another hit or two. They have uh, really high defense, so you gotta be careful with that. But they do drop their helms, uh, so if you ever get one, be sure to use it. It's a pretty cool effect. Okay, so just some chunks over here, some quick upgrade materials. It's a nice place to come if you are if you just want some, again, really quick upgrade materials. You can basically teleport here if you've completed the Ashes of Arian Dell DLC and just grab them. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's press on. And then this falls through, we'll fall through here, and we come down. All right. So we get a soul of a weary warrior. Oh, yeah, that was a trap. So these guys sort of suck us down. So we gotta rush the summoner again. Deal with him. Ooh. He moves. I don't think that was like a self-sacrifice or anything. I do think he's still around. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he is totally gone. Okay. Nope. All right. So with that kind of accomplished, let's just, yep. Yeah. Right. I knew he was around. Very good. Let's grab this now. And you can see this one here, so don't forget that one. Oh, I didn't even see what that was. It was some sort of scythe. Okay, cool. So that's this room. Oh, God. I'll just stop. So I'm trying to be uh, very mindful right here. The reason for that is because there are enemies that are brand new to this DLC 
and you really gotta watch out for. Okay, so we can hear it now. All right, so this thing right here that just sort of spawned out of nowhere, that is an angel. And you can see Gale pointing down, beckoning us to go down. But we have to be uh, very aware of these angels. And these guys rely on line of sight. I can't believe he just saw me. These guys rely on line of sight. So if they see you, they're basically going to shoot a giant attack at you that um, can one-shot you if you're not careful. So we need to quickly run down and then sort of get behind that building where you see that treasure. That's basically what we're going to do. So I'm going to wait for the angel to turn around again. It just buys you like an extra second. It doesn't really save you or anything, but every little bit helps. Okay, so this pillar will help us. And then once it turns around again, we'll run. It's basically red light, green light. Okay, very good. All right, so we're safe for now. Grab a lightning urn. And we can go inside. But inside, there's going to be quite a number of... Uh, there's going to be some Lothric Knights. And then a pillar is going to fall and bust the wall. So we got to be careful of that. Luckily, though, we can generally get this guy alone. Nope, never mind. Sometimes he does sort of send his homeboy after us. I don't think I'm going to have enough stamina to roll away. Okay. Ow. Ugh. It's really not a big deal. Just annoying. I'm gonna skip everything just to get back there. Okay. So I'm not gonna be like as cautious with the angel. I'm just going to drop. Okay. Very good. Okay. So let's come in here and try this again. What I really should do... Is help myself here. That's one. And as long as we don't go too far, we won't have to worry about the angel. Yeah, I was hoping to negate his shield bash there. Okay, very good. Again, be very careful. Don't go any further than this. Otherwise, the angel will spot you. Alright, wonderful. The angel's still here, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Wow, how did you get there? Okay. Let's go back inside, and like I mentioned before, a pillar is going to fall into this room. So I think that's what happens here. I actually think it's the next room. Alright, get the soul of a crestfallen knight, and then we're going to walk out. But there's going to be a number of enemies here, so we got to be careful. The pillar falls here, my bad. So, very careful. So, I, I can't really recall if that's like a sacrifice or not. Anyway, come up here. A lot of these rooms are like almost repeating from uh, High Wall of Lothric. So, like, 
there was a room very similar to this one in Highwall of Lothric, um, near where the first, like, big knight came around. Maybe these guys are infinite, and I shouldn't be wasting time here. I think these guys are infinite. There, yeah, get the hell out of here. Ow. That was a mistake. Shouldn't have done that. I'm trying to be very mindful of my stamina here. Murky Longstaff. Sounds like a nickname. Oh yeah, Murky Longstaff, I know him. Excuse me. Alright, just get the hell out of here. Alright, very good. Fancy. Okay, so Pillar is going to come crashing down here. It's this one right here, right? But pay attention to where it crashes. It crashes into this building, and so when this happens, this allows us to traverse. But you still got to be mindful of the angel. Let's come over here. Yep, and just keep running until you get over here. So behind us is an NPC. We're going to speak with him. Oh, look at you. You've got your head screwed on correct. Fantastic. To meet a kindred spirit on this god's forsaken crag, call me Lab. I, I can't remember my real name, so let's just go with that. I have a feeling we're going to make a fabulous team. Oh, you'll see. You'll see. Oh, in all honesty, there's something I should tell you. I'm a hollow. Yes, I try to play it off, but I haven't a clue about my past, who I was, or what I lived for. Not even my own blessed name. That's why I've come here, searching for the purging monument. Said to be in the ringed city, where the pygmies who found the dark soul at the dawn of fire reside. All I can say is, those little stones aren't doing much to help me remember anymore. <laughs> well, that's the long and short of it. So if I completely forget who you are, don't be wroth with me. Come on, what else can I say? I'm a bloody hollow, for heaven's sake. <laughs> well. All right, so that's Lap. We will come across him several times throughout the playthrough. For now, though, let us continue. We'll keep hiding, ducking through here. Now. Oh, huh, that was lucky. All right. Oh god, this is less good than I thought. Oh. Really not sure the best way to get out of this little pickle. Oh my god, dude. Oh, 
Okay, wow. So I, I did not want to fall there. there. I'm pretty sure there's some treasure that I could have grabbed, but it's okay. Again, I shouldn't waste all this time. Yeah, projected heal. That's a pretty good miracle. And now I just gotta figure out where to go. I think it's either there or it might be here. Here is better. Ow. Bro. Jesus. Okay. That was really messy. I have to apologize. I know I was quiet for a lot of that, but it, I've only actually played through Ring City twice, and they were all like a year apart, so some of this is like a little... It feels a little new to me. Um, luckily, however, um, there is sort of... Uh, it, it's kind of okay that that happened, because we missed some stuff in Lap's area before. And we also took a different route. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I spoke with Lap because he has a really long quest line that spans the entire uh, Ring City DLC. And it's honestly one of the most creative storylines they've ever come up with. Oh god, I'm dead. <sighs> god. This place sucks. <laughs> I, I much prefer the Ring City over the Drag Heap. Um, but yeah, so Lap's storyline basically takes up the entirety of the second DLC. And in my opinion, it's one of the most creative um, storylines that Dark Souls has. And again, you know, this being the final, for all intents and purposes, as of July 20th, 2021, when I'm recording this, um, this is the final piece of Dark Souls that we're ever gonna have. Um, you know, they try to fit a lot into a, into a little, in a sense. And I think it works really well. So I want to make sure to show you pretty much everything that this DLC has to offer. All right, so I am going to have to deal with these guys again. Did I just kick? Is that what just happened? Oh god damn it. I can't believe I'm alive. Had I checked my menu, I probably had literally one HP. I said there's a couple paths so the pillar has fallen but there is actually yeah. so the thing on this wall right here that's actually the thing that controls the angel so we need to go run and kill that Alright, so the angel is dead, and we won't have to worry about it anymore. And that is a kill once item, so you don't, or a kill once enemy, so you don't ever have to worry about that angel again. But that pathing path is a little weird because you gotta go see Lap, and then you gotta, 
you know, walk back. And so the reason I'm backtracking now is because that angel was preventing us from getting an item over here. The Ring of Steel Protection plus Tres. So you get a plus three ring, and I'm in new game plus zero. I'm in a flesh. I'm in a ew, flesh playthrough. I'm in a fresh playthrough right now. So really helpful item. So let me. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and equip that. That's like so strong. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So like I said, the angel is totally gone. It'll never come back, even if you die. Alright, and so Lap's little perch was up here. So I'm actually going to go that route again, because I don't want to miss anything that I might have missed. So with this world sort of, um, you know, this sort of being the end of the earth, if you will, and all these kingdoms sort of crumbling on top of one another and becoming very twisted and all that, um, it makes for a really interesting sort of uh, world-building scenario. And what I mean by that is... Uh... Oh, God. Damn it. I tried to avoid it. Uh, what I mean by that is we will sort of come to places that... Um... I, don't, I won't say, like, don't make sense, but... Uh, very clearly, maybe you weren't meant to ever cross paths in a really cool way. It, it, it's all good. It's, it's really never bad. Come here. <gasps> How dare you? Oh, God. This is pretty bad, actually. Because now we have these guys. Like I said before, these guys have unbelievably high uh, defense. Jesus. This, this is a mess. Yep. I believe the new fun esports term is scuffed. Yikes. Okay, there we go, finally. God. So we get ourselves a, a chunk of roo. You know. Okay, this I thought that might have been oil. It's not. Okay. So we can drop down. I kinda don't want to, man. Is there any way for me to get back up? Probably not. Yeah, I don't want to drop too far, you know? All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make one more pass here, but I'm just gonna run straight through. Um, I'm not really gonna worry about anything. Um, I think except for the summoner near Lap's location. And the reason I'm doing this is because we fell where that two-handed uh, greatsword knight was and, and the spear knight. I don't wanna leave here until I check what's behind them because I kinda don't think I've ever actually been down their hallway. But once we do this, we'll actually plummet further down and uh, kind of get into like the really big area of the drag heap. There. 
So like I said, the angel is forever gone. You never need to worry about this one again. There will be more angels though, so you're not like completely home free or anything. Is that? What is that? All right, so let's drop down. Damn. Okay, I just wanted to get him alone without having to deal with all the other guys. Very good. So we're going to drop one more time now. And we're going to drop here. Oh my god. So we're trying this again. Hopefully this goes a little bit better. This is a little bit better. Wasn't aware I'd have this big room to work with. So this is kind of helpful. I'm very confused. Yeah, I don't actually think I've ever been in this room. <sighs> Sweet Jesus, that's one. I like these guys consistently drop chunks. That's very helpful. The Lothric War Banner. Dude, I don't think I've ever actually been here. In this little room here. All right. Cool. Oh. So this little area here, uh, there's a bit going on. So you see the little gray rat dude, which is all cute and nice. Um, but just double checking to make sure that I can do what I think I want to do. Yeah. All right. So let's go to the bonfire. And then I'm actually going to do something. Oh, here's Lap again. Sorry, let's speak with Lap see what he has to say. Oh, I know who you are. Great to see you still in one piece. Come, I can see why they call this the Drake Heap at the World's End. Mangled remnants from every age and every land. It actually sort of lends credence to the old rumors that the ringed city rests below it all. Ah, uh, <laughs> don't mind me. You needn't worry yourself with this nonsense. I just wanted to tell someone. I'm sick of old Humpty. I should stay quiet. Wait. I'll make it up to you. By letting you in on a secret of sorts. Past here, you'll find the remains of a giant earthen tower 
half submerged in a poisonous swamp. Not a very nice place to visit. Only there's precious treasure in the thick of the swamp. I didn't have any use for it, you see. So, sorry, I, I left the whole package behind. If I get the chance, I, I could go fetch it for you. But if that's too long to wait, go nab it for yourself. I know who you are. A righteous warrior. Yes? With a solemn duty to boot. Well, grab that treasure. That's as good a duty as any. Past here. If, well. Okay, so Lap has sort of clued us into a treasure uh, in a swamp, so thanks, Lap. Really appreciate that. What I'm going to do, though, is I realize I missed a treasure. I thought that there was a ladder back up from further on, but there is not. So I'm just going to grab that really quick. It's basically just past those two Lothar knights, so this is only take a second. All right. I really don't think I ever picked up that Lothric War Banner or even the Ring of Steel Protection plus three. I don't think there were trophies for the DLC specifically, or if they were, it was just like kill these bosses. So I, that might be why. Also, there was no um, little fun fact. Uh, Future Press did the strategy guides for Dark Souls 1, 2, I think 2. Two might have been Prima, but they definitely did it for uh, Bloodborne and Sekiro. Um, and for Bloodborne, they released the book, which is a giant volume. Um, but they also released a second book for uh, the Old Hunters DLC. And that was just a fantastic, absolutely fantastic um, addition to the sort of library of books uh, for the Soul series. Now, but for uh, Dark Souls 3, that was not the case, which was a little unfortunate. But, you know, it's pretty rare for, like, DLC to get its own book, so I wasn't that surprised. It's just, like, Bloodborne sort of set the precedent, you know, and it was, I was really hoping that they would bring it forward. That was pretty rare to get that third hit on the shield. Or to, to miss and then get two consecutive hits. That's actually kind of rare. Good. All right, so this should allow us to sort of check this out. So there was a treasure up here that I missed. Up here. How the hell do you get up there? Ah, yeah, okay, I think I missed, like, a whole thing over here. Sorry about that. So there's a ladder to be dropped there, so... There's something here? There's something here? There's something somewhere. Staircase. Drop the ladder here. Very nice. Of course, I hear things. Oh no. Oh god. Doing this place without a shield is just a giant mistake. It is funny that that note said hidden path ahead, because that is clearly hidden. That little stairwell. All good though, we dropped the ladder so it should be easier to access where we died. I am going to kill those two Lothric Knights though, because they, they will chase me to Kingdom Come. I 
actually, I don't think they will. Because we really just have the two guys here. And this guy should explode. Yep. Yeah, we're all good. As long as these guys don't shoot lightning or something crazy. Or climb ladders, for that matter. Deep gem, nice. Giant soul dregs. Cool. Good spell. Alright, and then we should have a drop here. Yep. Great. Covetous silver serpent ring plus three. Wow, what an upgrade. Cool. Alrighty. So now we can sort of move on here. Wonder bar. Okay, so that's it for this whole first section now. We finally completed it. Again, Ringed City is something I've only played a couple of times, so apologies for like not being super on it. Uh, that said, I'm pretty familiar with the next section. Uh, the next section is kind of like everyone's worst nightmare for various reasons. Okay. So let's rest, and then we will continue on. Okay, so before we get too deep into uh, this area, we should s begin climbing up here. Reason being that there are a number of enemies over here for us to kill, along with some very valuable treasure. And if you kind of look... Alright, so you see a windmill in the distance there. If you pay attention to the bonfire names, I'll actually just go back really quick. If you pay attention to the bonfire names, you sort of get your bearings uh, in various ways. So this is called the Earthen Peak Ruins. So this is the ruins of Earthen Peak from Dark Souls 2. So again, these lands are all converging on themselves here at the end of the world. And these little buggers return. They, they were in Dark Souls 3, but yeah, you know what I mean. Oh no, we've been poisoned. We get a black firebomb. I'm just gonna rest to reset the poison. Okay. Cool. So let's return to the top of the windmills here. I guess I think we should. Yeah, so basically these windmills are kind of turned sideways, and so that forces us to have to traverse them uh, in a sort of like a specific manner. But you want to make sure that you kind of have somewhere to fall down to. And generally, people have left hints for you, so it's not too difficult. Uh, beware, though, that there is an angel that will spawn over here. I mean, there's no hidden path there. Don't believe that. Right. But we can drop here. The angel spawns there, and then we can use uh, these rocks to sort of block ourselves. Um, what we want to do, though, is we want to run into that shack. That's basically our next destination. So wait for the angel to turn. Wait for the angel to turn around, and then go for it. Okay. But while you're in these places, you got to watch out because there will be little pygmy dudes. Oh god. There will be little pygmy dudes. Yep. See them there. That will run around. And while the angel, you know, treats them as enemies, they will also treat you as an enemy. So our next destination is this little shack right here, this broken shack. But once we get inside, those little pygmy guys uh, will sort of start attacking us. So we got to do our best to wait for a good opportunity. All right, let's go now. So we're going to come in here. But again, be careful. Come on. Oh god, I'm wasting so much stamina. Yeah. Okay, great. So that that's that. I'm going to leave all the treasure here until we kill the angel much later. So drop down in here. But again, yep, there you go. Watch out for these guys. 
Okay, so there's going to be another... I'm almost positive another... Yep, another angel spawns right there. Be careful. So basically what this means is we have to traverse the swamp now. Oh god. Forgot the angel can do that. That sucks. Uh, but you can come in here, and the angel can't really hurt you. I really forgot about that curse cloud. Okay. Very good. So, what we have to do is we have to avoid the angel. So there's a little cave through here that we gotta get into. But of course, this guy shows up. Oh god. Don't worry about the poison. Oh, I didn't realize the angel could see us. That's not great. Curse cloud again. here. I'm just trying to take this guy out. I'm, I'm not at all worried about the poison while we're doing this. I'm just worried about surviving. We're poisoned from the swamp anyway, so like the poison from those bugs is meaningless. Grab your chunk, but again, be careful because the angel can sort of peek in and see you. All right, I'm almost positive that another one of these big guys can spawn in here. I feel like I remember that. Yeah, there he is. These guys are not weak to lightning, FYI. They're weak to anything. want them to drop their helms. I just, I think it's like one of the coolest looking items in the entire game. If not like the entire series, they just look so sick. Oof. One more hit. Bada bing. Alright. Chunk. No such luck today. He is guarding this. Titanite slab. Lots of upgrade materials in the DLCs. It's like three slabs in Ashes of Ariandel. There's one there. Okay, so now what we gotta do is continue on through the swamp, avoiding the angel. This angel patrols around though. Ooh, hey. Ah, damn. I have no ash and estus. <laughs> that sucks. I don't have any knives either. Yeah. Damn. That's okay. We could equip the ash and estus ring and restore my FP that way, but it's okay. So we're gonna run to the right. Basically gotta get to that root. It's just the river here really does not matter at all. Do your best to restore stamina, like, as intelligently as you can. I know that sounds kind of silly, but that's what you gotta do. Alright. So, you're pretty much safe here. Uh, but the slug is actually accessed via the rooftops. Yeah, the slug is up there. You can see it. 
drop here. I'm ready to come up here. Okay, so we're gonna ignore this side. I'm ready to come this way. Oof. Completely forgot about that guy. Right. Just be mindful of the angel as best you can. Right, we come over here. Walk up this one. And then we drop here. And then here's the slug. And there you go, that's the angel. See you later. And that is the angel that was near the bonfire as well. Let's get Twinkling Titanite from the slug. And then we can proceed safely through the rest of the swamp. Um, right, and there's a root here. Use this root to drop onto this root. I mean, root is an understatement, really. I'm going back down into the swamp. Chunk there. Now let's clear out the swamp. I'm not going to worry about any bugs that I don't absolutely need to kill, which is actually going to be very few of them. Cloth. There's that guy. Do I have to fight him? I guess I probably do. Alright. Come on. There you go. That he can't be backstabbed, you know? One, two, three, four, five, six, and a jump. I'm going to get it before this DLC is over. Mark my words. Where'd you drop from? So believe it or not, we're actually going to drop down here again, but I just wanted to do all this now. Because this does get a little weird. Uh, there are some enemies up on the, like, uh, upper parts of the roots. Uh, it's basically the pyromancers from Earthen Peak in Dark Souls 2, but they are way stronger. Yeah, the desert pyromancers. They are on some serious... Steroida. Yes, this whole set is here. So that should sort of clue you into, hey, you're going to have to fight these things a little later. So unfortunately, I don't think there's uh, a way back up through here. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I generally don't think that there is. That's okay, though. We'll return to that big open field in a little while. Uh, once we reach the next bonfire, we'll, we'll warp back and do it. For now, though, um, I am just going to check. Yeah, so there's a little pocket here with one of those big hollow head guys. So this is sort of like the real way to avoid the angel, but I like taking the roots just because you can run and avoid the whole mess and just take a, you know, a tiny bit of damage. Okay. 
set. Oh, forgot about that move. There is their uh, item. Still no helm. Shame. Okay. Right. Oh, you know, I guess this isn't really the way to do that. To avoid the uh, angel. Maybe it is. I don't know. I, I know the way I like to take, and I just take. I guess that's really just a, a trap for the sword, maybe. Anyway, let's proceed back up, and then we'll uh, sort of get to the next bonfire area. Actually, I don't think it's bonfire. Okay, so we got that. And then we can drop here. Very good. And so there's uh, a lot of thieves in this area. Uh, but also a lot of those desert pyromancers. Yeah, you can see him there. So what I'm going to try to do... I don't think that these guys will totally leave. I think they do... I think they are leashed to her. Let me see if I can go down. Does she come all the way? Sure does. It looks like there's no avoiding this one. I was thinking maybe I can get the little gray rat guys to drop. Great. That's that's a wonderful way to do this. Okay, perfect. So now we just have to deal with homegirl, which is easy enough. All right, so this is Desert Pyromancer Zoe. Oh god. Who clearly does a lot of damage. She's got a lot of stuff going on. Luckily, not a ton of health, but she can absolutely, yep, she can drink. So, you're not like, you know, totally home free with her. If you have a longer range weapon, I recommend using it uh, as she begins to swing. Because that will allow you... Yeah, and then just rush her down. I think she probably only heals twice. Yep, so she's out of Estus now. So we can just gang up on her, no problem. <gasps> wow. That's surprising. Alright. So there is Desert Pyromancer Zoe. Just wait on the route, and then you can take out the little guards. So you get the Flame Fan Pyromancy. Be careful, though, because there are still uh, a good number of the Grey Rat guys, unless they drop down earlier. I guess they did. Okay, that's fine. Um, you also want to sort of be mindful that there are areas for you to drop down onto for additional treasure. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come up here really fast and see where this goes. Why do I feel like there's another angel about to show up? Yep, I called that one. Where's the slug for this one? Alright, let's just do this. Let us... I doubt I can survive this. Son of a bitch. So I think we might have actually dealt with the slug in the big open field. So this actually isn't that bad of a situation here. Get out of town. Now, is this the same one as the one that just sort of killed us? Huh. 
the good news is that the one in the swamp is dead. So that's really helpful. Now you're not going to kill these guys? I mean, that's just like discrimination, man. Where did the other one go? Oh, there he is. What's this? An ember. Alright. Anyway, let's drop down and go back to the swamp. But I'm a little confused now how to actually get that treasure. I guess you gotta drop from a different location. Anyway, good news. The swamp is clear. The pyromancer is dead, so we're fine. I am now kind of curious where the hell that angel's slug is. I kind of forget. It's okay. One of those big uh, Dark Soul head guys spawned, I know. I'm ignoring it. Pretty sure the two that were attached to the Pyromancer will be here again. Yeah, there they are. Great. Okay. Cool, so let's just check this out here. This doesn't seem right, but... Nope. Oh! Okay. Oh. Sure. I was expecting to die, so that's nice. You know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to equip the cat ring. This, so the cat ring doesn't save you from instant death, but I don't know. Every little bit helps, right? All right. Ring of favor plus three. God damn. And a good old Titanite chunk. Oh god. <laughs> Alright, let's deal with that last angel there. I'm pretty sure that's the one from the from the open field just come back to haunt us. So if we find that last slug, which I'm pretty sure the slug is like in the area that it's forcing you to run to. So I think we're okay. Alright, let's let's see. I'll just very carefully look out for any, uh, any glaring openings. But I'm glad we were able to clear all this out. Right. Alright, so he's... That angel's there. It's definitely the same one. Alright, so we're going to drop here. That sort of blocks the view. Right? Yep. And then we drop off again. And then... And then what do we do? We go there, where that hint is. Where's the slug, though? Alright. Let's do this. Oof. 
The slug is over here. There it is. Okay, very good. We found it. Yeah, and this is the slug for the big open field. I'm almost positive that they are the same things. Kind of gross. Anyway. Is there anything over here? I feel like this is a dead end. It, it's just such a cool area to look at things from. So this is that big hollowed out tree that the uh, hobble, uh, hunchback woman, or I can't remember her name, lady at the beginning was talking about. So this is the hollowed out tree. So you can drop down there. I'm not going to do it from here. I'm pretty sure that that will kill you. So we got to go at it from another angle, but we're not actually done clearing everything out. Um, there is a treasure that you have to drop onto uh, that you can really only get from kind of one angle. And believe it or not, it's right by the bonfire. Um, so that's really my next destination. All right. And then we also have these rooftops, but I want to be careful to ensure that I could actually get back. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure if I were to get that treasure, I have to just sort of go back through the swamp, which kind of sucks. Um... I don't want to do that just yet. Yeah, so this is the big open field. Anyway, so this will drop you down to the boss. Um, or not necessarily. That'll, that'll get you to the boss. So we're not going to do that just yet. Instead. Oh, actually, I guess we should just explore, right? Because this is the bombed out building. Okay, cool. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop here. We're going to grab this treasure, which is a divine blessing. Actually, quite helpful. Um, I killed Sister Frida because of a divine blessing. I'm going to drop here. And then... Oh, damn. Uh, there's a treasure that I have to drop onto. So we have to go through the swamp one more time. There's so many, like, useful treasures and stuff um, that it, it's just worth getting everything. Plus, you know, these are supposed to be, like, complete walkthroughs, so I, I want to show you how to get every treasure. Because there are certain treasures where you're like, how the hell do I get that thing? And there are some that you can, believe it or not, um, sort of cheese your way into, uh, including the one that I'm about to show you how to get. Um, but this is, like, the real method. So now that Angel's dead, we can sort of traverse um, that area in peace. I have the Karthus milk. Hang on. And then, just so I can get rid of the annoying sound. All right. Great. So, there is a treasure that we can get now. Whereas the, the bonfire is over there. The bonfire is there. Right, so we walk across this like gnarled route here. Very good. Okay. Glad we figured all this out. <laughs> so this goes to the boss. Or the boss area. So we will not do that just yet. Right. So let's drop down here and then let's clear out this field. Now that the angel is no longer a, th a threat. So lots of upgrade materials. Lots and lots of upgrade materials.
Oh, totally forgot. I had a feeling that there'd be some some meanies there. I had a feeling that that was going to happen. So there's a treasure down here. Okay. Giant door shield. So this is actually a really funny shield. Let me see if I can equip this. I cannot. You need 45 strength. Actually, I can. I can do this. So the, the beauty of this shield is that you actually attack. It's similar to a shield from Dark Souls 2. Um, but if you two-hand it, the weapon art is you put the doors together and then you run through everybody. So it's like a really funny shield, uh, but it, it you can use it for like sort of like gimmicky PvP builds. Um, I'm sure somebody's beaten the game with it, but uh, that's kind of the idea. It's a funny, funny thing. I believe that it was uh, something in Dark Souls 2. I remember there was an enemy that was a door or something like that, and then they had a rare chance of dropping the item. Okay, so I'm not going to grab that just yet. Uh, that will require one final trip into the swamp. Uh, so before we do all that, uh, what I am going to do is we're going to get onto this route. And then this is going to drop us back near the bonfire. How do we do this? Sorry, this, this confused the bejeepers out of me my first time through the game. Right, so this is the route that I was talking about. So right here, this is how you get the treasure that you were looking at from the bonfire. Bonfire's right there, lap is there, so on and so forth. Okay, so I think what we're ready to do now is, uh, yeah, we are ready to rest one final time at the bonfire, and then we're gonna get a treasure, and then we are gonna proceed to the boss. So the boss is the Demon Princes. Uh, they're basically like a big dragon kind of gargoyle kind of fight. Um, there's two ways to kill them. Basically, whichever one you kill first determines kind of what happens with the other one. Uh, being completely candid with you, I don't necessarily pay attention to which one I kill. And that's just a personal preference thing. That's... Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's just a personal preference thing. Um, one is more magic-based, one is more fire-based. And then I'm pretty sure, like, whichever one you kill first, the other one gets souped up or something like that. Sort of like an orange scene in Smo. Um, I could be completely making this up, honestly, and I wouldn't know. Um, but it's basically just like a dragon fight. So once we sort of get to the, to the spot, I'll look it up really fast to just make sure I'm not talking out of my the side of my mouth. Or out of my butt. But let's just get there first. So, again, this route is now way faster since everything's dead, no angels, and so on. The angels are a cool mechanic. Um, they don't return after this. So after this part and after we kill the boss, uh, you'll never have to worry about the angels again. Uh, but, you know, if there's anything that... Oh, God. If there's anything that you might have missed, uh, be sure to go grab it. Because you will have to bonfire back here. But at the very least, you should have the full Pyromancer set. Or full Desert Pyromancer set. That's sort of the big prize of this area. Along with all the upgrade materials. Drop these ashes. Gale points us down. There's another ash pile right here. And a bonfire. So luckily there's a bonfire right before the boss, which is, of course, extraordinarily helpful. Whew. Okay, so this bonfire is called... 
within the Earthen Peak Ruins. So, so far we have the Dreg Heap, Earthen Peak Ruins, and within the Earthen Peak Ruins. What we're going to do now is we're going to come all the way over here, and then I think you can summon Lap for this fight if you like. I'm going to go into it unkindled. But very quick, let me uh, look up Demon Prince DS3. Alright, final phase of the Demon and Pie Demon. Okay. Demon in Pain and Demon from Below are the two. You can summon Lap. You, his summon sign will be found on the ledge. Um, so... Alright, let's try that again. Unfortunately, this does mean that we have to kill both of them again, and then, you know, full reset on the fight. You don't just immediately start fighting Demon Prince. But now that we sort of have our bearings... Uh, the hell are... I'm, I'm gonna go get my souls. So many souls that I don't want to miss them. Alright. So again, it doesn't exactly matter which one you kill first. Whoa. Bro. But just like when you fought Frida and Father Ariandel, you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on where they both are. Yikes. Oh boy. Ooh, he's angry. Bad move. Should not have done that. Shouldn't have done that either. I'm pretty sure that's toxic. I don't think that's regular poison, so you definitely don't want to get caught up in that. Unless you have a blooming moss clump, and then no problem, but I don't currently have those on my bar. So I don't want to have to deal with that. Toxic, there we go. Let's see if we can get this on the bar really fast. Ooh, Onion Knight fighting him. Oh, gotta get out of here. Man, I'm really bad at at timing that one. Jesus. I know, yeah, I knew the other one was gonna like come flying out. I knew that was coming. Damn. I've used so many flasks and I haven't even gotten to phase two yet. If I could just get rid of one, that'd be so helpful. Alright, that's one. Chase this guy down. I'm gonna let my stamina replenish. Drink up. Transition the phase here. All right, very good. So phase two, things get real. So let's wait for the explosion. Get up in him. So you definitely want to follow. So you can get some attacks on the legs. He can now turn around and just sort of slam. But being near his body 
is actually like a sweet spot of sorts because he slams down a lot, so you could literally just walk through his feet. Ow. I was not expecting that. Hopefully I don't die now. All right, so he's gonna do a big beam attack now. And while he's doing this, he is stationary, but you have to watch out because he could do another one like right in your face. Yeah, you wanna watch out for that. mistimed badly. That's okay. Yeah, so when he's sort of cocking that fireball up, you want to chase him. You just want to keep rolling through it. Damn, that, that one trips me up every time. Bad. Wow. Can't believe I managed to crack that. Yikes. All right. You'd be really, really mindful of your stamina. Ooh, nice. Nice, 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 nice. You'd be really mindful of your stamina. Always watch that and make sure you have enough to escape with. All right. So he should get ready with his laser beam attack now. Yep, here it comes. So while this is happening, just go nuts. It's like 10 seconds of free damage, but be careful because he's going to do one in your face. Yep. And the sort of shockwave from that can hurt you. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to be very cautious here. <laughs> I'm going to be very cautious. I don't want to get, like, too eager here. Nice. Perfect ending to the Demon Prince. So yeah, you just don't want to get like too cocky against him if you have fought uh, Black Dragon Calamite um, in Dark Souls 1. This fight shouldn't be too hard for you. Um, and what I mean by that is they can't necessarily fly for any big period of time. So you just got to deal with a lot of swooping attacks and a lot of thrashing. If you kill the, the bosses in different orders, so if you were to kill the demon in pain first instead of the one from the deep, um, the demon prince would instead be able to summon a huge spirit bomb fireball. And you basically just have to kind of like run around to avoid it. So killing the demon in pain or the demon from the deep first uh, allows you to deal with that laser beam attack instead, which is really helpful. So I do want to check out the soul here. Soul of the Demon Prince, one of the twisted souls steeped in strength. Used to acquire many souls or transposed to extract its true strength. The demons, birthed from a common chaos, share almost everything between them, even the pride of their prince and his near-fated flame, so that the last demon standing may rekindle it. Interesting. All right. So, uh, if you don't want to hear a big story lore spoiler, I recommend you stop watching here. But I'll give you a second to kind of do that while I light this bonfire. So if you don't want a big lore moment spoiled for you, you want to discover it on your own, totally understood, just stop watching here. Okay, so there's something really important that I want to show you. So, uh, let's pillage these remains for the small envoy banner. We'll use that in a little bit. This area that we are in right now is Firelink Shrine from Dark Souls 1. And we know that through a couple of cues. Um, so there's this sort of entryway, right? This looks very Lordran-esque. But there's something really important here. Where the hell is it? I may have to teleport out and reload this in order to get it. It might have gotten destroyed during the encounter. So let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, I'm just looking around for it. Okay. Yeah, let me uh, let me 
teleport back and uh, I'll just go to the bonfire up top. Sorry, I just really want to show these sort of like, um, what would you call them? These sort of little visual indicators of things. And this is why I think the Ring City as a DLC is probably like the greatest send off to this series it could have ever had. Like this feels like the culmination of a ton of ideas, but also like a, a lot of fan service as well. So let's just drop down again. So the bonfire's there. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm glad I redid this now. So, this is very likely the well from uh, Firelink Shrine in Dark Souls 1. This right here is very likely the well. So sometimes you'll see hints here that say, like, try finger butthole. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, it's just like a neat little visual indicator. And then the other thing, too, is... Uh, this over here. So basically, right, like we walk, this is where, uh, this, this is where, uh, Framped would appear. So monstrosity friend, no monstrosity ahead, may the flames guide thee. This is basically where Framped would appear, and then you're gonna go further down into the world. And so this is where the chest would be, right? If, uh, if you lost any items, Right. If you lost any items, the statue of, of the mother would be here with the chest. And so this is this area. So this is Firelink Shrine from Dark Souls 1. Um, I won't go any further than this. Uh, we did pick up the banner. But let's warp back to Firelink Shrine, level up, and then end the walkthrough. I will say this was a bit of a messy walkthrough. I kind of anticipated this because I've only played through the Ring City a couple times. Um, I remember like all the combat encounters and how to deal with each of the enemies, but... Um, doing so successfully and like remembering all the patterns is another story. Um, ah. okay. okay, I just wanted to make sure I didn't owe anybody ashes or anything. Okay, very good. Alright. Cool. So let's keep going into faith here. Go to 30. And then I think I can use a different miracle now. I still cannot use lightning steak, son of a bitch. E thirty-five. Okay, and then uh, sunlight spear is forty-five, I think. Yeah, forty. Okay, so <laughs> still got a while to go. Anyway, if you uh, use the soul of the demon prince, you can uh, purchase seething chaos. Uh, the last flame lit by the Demon Prince, this pyromancy hurls a clump of chaos. Upon impact, this clump of chaos seethes wildly, condenses briefly, then explodes violently. To the demons, these clumps are shreds of life. Really cool. Um, old Demon King is there. Who the hell's the old soul of the old Demon King? How do you get that? Soul of the old Demon King. Defeat the old demon. What the hell's that? Oh, this is from so long ago. <laughs> Don't forget about that. Um, straight demon. Just want to make sure there's nothing else to be forged. Right. So you can also uh, create this weapon, Demon Scar. The cha this chaotic thing, the last flame kindled by the demon prince, is shaped like the claw marks of a demon. It is both a fiery bladed weapon and a pyromancy flame. And the skill is Spin Slash, which you spin to stoke a fierce chaos flame and use momentum to transition into a spinning, strong attack, creating a short-lived lava pool. So really cool weapon that you can forge with those souls. You do need to kill them twice in order to get both, though. Uh, okay, so with all that said, this is going to be the end of this part of the walkthrough. The Ringed City is next. The actual Ringed City. In the Ringed City, there are three bosses. So there's literally double the amount of bosses as there was in Ashes of Arya and Del. That said, uh, one of them is optional, and that is sort of like the ultimate fight of Dark Souls 3. That is against a dragon named Dark Eater Medir. What I'm going to do is in the next walkthrough, I'm going to not fight Medir. 
instead we are going to go through like the rest of the story of the dlc and fight uh the spear of the church and then uh slave knight gale slave knight gale is probably like the coolest boss dark souls has ever had um definitely kind of has some attacks that really threw me for a loop and i was just blown away visually at how good it looked um and then the the fight before that the uh church spears um that is a fight in the style of old monk from demon souls wherein the boss that you're fighting is actually a player so when it comes time for that boss specifically i'm going to disconnect from the internet and just sort of show you how to deal with the pve version of that fight rather than pvp because it's just going to be so different that said though if you're interested in going for it do it it's a really cool experience and if you like the whole demon um demon king no what old monk uh style fighting in demon souls go for it um you can become a spear of the church through a dlc item um, and then become the boss so it's much more of a concrete mechanic than it was in demon souls um it's no longer you know just put a sign down and hope you get summoned as the boss or invade and hope you get summoned as the boss um in this it's literally a covenant so you just put it on the covenant item connect to the connect to the internet and wait um but the next area is long there's a lot to do we still have laps quest line to finish out and the ring city is huge so the next walkthrough will be long it might be one of the longest uh, so just be prepared for that and then the final final walkthrough for dark souls 3 will be just the dark eater madir fight okay so that'll do it for this one if you have any questions please feel free to leave a comment i'll do my best to help you out if you're looking for more guides for Dark Souls 3, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch, and as always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.